Good morning. The Secretary General uh, will uh, update you on this morning's uh, meeting on Afghanistan, and then he'll be happy to take your questions. Good morning. We have just uh, finished uh, a productive meeting uh, with all uh, nations uh, contributing to our resolute support uh, mission in Afghanistan. And together with uh, President uh, Ghani and uh, Chief Executive Abdullah, we discussed the security situation, the Afghan government's reforms, and our continued uh, partnership. Afghanistan uh, is making progress, and that progress must continue, especially when it comes to respect for human rights, anti-corruption, and electoral uh, reforms. Working towards uh, reconciliation should also be a priority. The Afghan security forces are now responsible for security across the whole country. They are defending uh, the Afghan people with dedication uh, and courage. We continue to train, advise and assist them. But Afghanistan still faces serious instability and violence. So our continued political, military and financial engagement uh, is of uh, great uh, importance. That is why we took three decisions uh, today. Uh, first, we agreed uh, to sustain our resolute support mission beyond 2016 through a flexible regional model. And I thank President Obama for his significant decision on two levels. I also commended the other frame of nations, Germany, Italy, and Turkey, and all other allies and partners that contribute to the mission for their strong commitment to our mission. Additional planning will be, con will be, conducting, will be conducted in the coming months to define our overall presence in 2017. Second, we reviewed, a firm national, uh, commitment. We, sorry, we reviewed firm national commitments to continue funding for the Afghan security security forces uh, through uh, 2020. And third, uh, we reaffirmed our support for a long-term political partnership and practical cooperation with Afghanistan. So our message is clear. Afghanistan does not stand alone, and we are committed for the long haul. And with that, I'm ready to take your uh, questions. We'll go to one TV in the front row. One TV. Please wait for the mic. Okay. Thank you very much. This is Abdullah Merci One beaucoup. TV, Kabul, Afghanistan. My one question TV is, Secretary Kabul, General, considering the outgoing threats in Afghanistan, is there any possibility that NATO give the twists? to its operation and take part in attacks and rights against the Taliban as there is a changes in the mission of the United States, for example, giving air support to the Afghan armies or not. The Resolute Support Mission is a non-combat uh, mission. And what we do is to train, assist, and advise the Afghan forces. And I think it is extremely important to understand that we ended our combat mission at the end of 2014 because we, over several years, uh, had built up a national uh, Afghan army and security forces able to take full responsibility of security in their own country. So the rest of support mission is going to continue as a uh, non-combat train assist and advice mission. But then uh, the United States, they have a, a seat or a counter-terror presence in addition uh, to the rest of support mission. And they uh, continue to work with the Afghan forces uh, also uh, uh, in, in operations uh, 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 directed directly against uh, uh, different uh, terrorist uh, groups. But that is for the U.S. Uh, to uh, answer more in detail about uh, those activities. Radio Free Europe. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Secretary General. Uh, I have two uh, questions. Uh, first, uh, uh, you know that uh, President Obama has already said that uh, security situation in Afghanistan is still a precarious, in Afghanistan is still a precarious and uh, that the Taliban are still a threat. Uh, you are well aware of the fact that uh, uh, some ISL-affiliated groups are uh, uh, operational in some pockets of eastern Afghanistan. Do you have fears uh, for instability in the country? Second question is that uh, uh, what are your specific demands uh, from uh, uh, President Ghani and CEO Abdullah uh, in return uh, for all the support and pledges that you're making uh, during the summit. Thank you very much. The situation in Afghanistan is not easy. It's a difficult situation. And of course, we see violence, we see terrorist attacks, uh, we see turmoil, and uh, we uh, don't expect uh, this to become uh, easy very soon. So it's going to continue to be a challenging situation in Afghanistan. And that's exactly why we have decided to continue to support the Afghans, because they continue to need our support. Uh, and uh, that's also the reason why we welcome uh, the progress we see that the Afghan army and security forces uh, are making. They are becoming uh, more and more capable. Uh, they are developing new capabilities, for instance, Air Force. And when I visited Afghanistan some months ago, I visited also uh, Afghan soldiers, uh, men and women, uh, who were trained as pilots, and uh, I saw how Afghanistan is developing a new capability, Afghan uh, air forces. Uh, so uh, there is no reason to believe that uh, uh, all the problems in Afghanistan will be solved in the near future, but that's exactly why we will continue to support them, both with uh, our military presence, the rest of support mission, and with continued funding uh, for the uh, Afghans. The Wall Street Journal. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the funding uh, NATO hoped uh, to get uh, one billion in pledges from non U.S. allies and partners for Afghanistan. How close are you to that number in pledges? And just to follow up on the last question. Do you assess that there is a real Islamic State threat in Afghanistan, or is it not as grave as the Taliban threat? One of the great achievements of this meeting is that uh, we now have in place uh, the one billion non-U.S. Uh, uh, commitments, uh, or almost in place all the commitments we need. So we are very close, and, uh, and uh, I'm certain that we will uh, reach that uh, level. Uh, to be able to uh, maintain the same level of funding for the Afghan forces as we have up till today, also uh, uh, to uh, 2020. Uh, uh, second, we have seen um, reports and we have seen some presence of uh, ISIL, but, what we have, uh, but we have also seen that uh, local Taliban groups rebrand themselves and pledge uh, uh, loyalty to ISIL. Uh, I think uh, uh, what matters is not exactly what the different groups are called, but that we uh, continue to strengthen uh, the Afghans uh, uh, and enable them uh, to fight different terrorist groups and, uh, and strengthen their capabilities to stabilize their own country. And we have seen some quite effective actions in that regard over the recent months where Afghan forces, also together with U.S. forces, have been very effective in attacking uh, different uh, terrorist groups, uh, Al-Qaeda and others, in Afghanistan. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, what sort of commitments um, has the Afghan side uh, taken in return um, of uh, NATO commitments? The Afghan government uh, strongly expressed uh, a commitment to continue to implement reforms, uh, to work for uh, respecting human rights, uh, including the rights of women, uh, and uh, to fight uh, corruption. And that was also a strong message uh, from across the board in the meeting today. 
that uh, NATO and NATO partners will continue to support Afghanistan, but we expect that they will step up uh, their efforts uh, to fight corruption and to uh, implement uh, reforms. So there is a close connection between our support and our expectation that they support and our expectation that they will uh, increase their efforts to uh, modernize uh, their own society. Could we get to the front row, please, to Ariana TV? Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Afghanistan has always been talking about the lack of air forces facilities. Does NATO have any specific plan to equip the Afghan air forces so it can handle the raids by its own? One of the activities of the NATO presence, the rested support in Afghanistan, is that we are helping the Afghans with developing their own air forces. And uh, when I visited Afghanistan some months ago, I uh, met with uh, soldiers um, um, which were trained or who were trained to become pilots uh, at the Kabul International uh, Airport. And uh, I was impressed by their dedication, by their commitment. And uh, Afghanistan is now in the process of uh, developing their own Air Force uh, capabilities. Uh, and uh, this is of great importance. And that just underlines the importance of uh, the NATO presence uh, there. And uh, as I said, I, I met both men and women who were strongly committed uh, and were trained as uh, pilots and, uh, and other skills related to the uh, Air Force, the Afghan Air Force. Uh, thank you, Rolf Fredriksson, Swedish TV Secretary General. Was the question of safety and security of medical workers and aid workers raised, and what did you comment in the context of last year's attack of the Hospital of Médecins Sans Frontières, but also other incidents? Thank you. That was a profound tragedy, and uh, I think it's very important that it has been uh, assessed very thoroughly, and uh, we have reports, and, uh, and uh, uh, it has been something uh, which has been uh, uh, addressed both in NATO, but also uh, in the United uh, States. The protection of civilians and health workers is very high on our agenda. It, does, it is of great importance, and one of the issues which we are addressing in our cooperation with the Afghan forces uh, to our rescue support presence is exactly how to protect civilians, how to protect uh, health workers, and how to avoid uh, civilian uh, casualties. So uh, that is an issue we have, for instance, been uh, discussing uh, with uh, the UN, and the UN was present in the meeting today. And we recently also met with uh, the International Red Cross, and that has also been high on uh, the agenda in our cooperation with the Red, Red Cross. So we will continue to do uh, our utmost uh, to avoid uh, uh, any civilian casualties and also to uh, uh, help and enhance the uh, awareness of the Afghan forces uh, to avoid uh, any civilian casualties. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Secretary General, the commitment here is into 2017 for resolute support, but you speak about it being committed for the long haul. Realistically, how long is resolute support going to have to continue? There is no reason to speculate uh, exactly on how long it will continue. I think what we have seen as, is that we are uh, committed and we are ready to stay. Uh, and, uh, and that's the reason why we have decided to stay uh, beyond 2016. Uh, uh, and then we have to assess the situation next year and decide uh, what to do uh, with our military uh, presence. Uh, but uh, uh, you have to also remember that uh, in addition to the military presence with our own troops in the rest of support uh, mission, we have all that is decided uh, to continue the funding uh, through 2020. Uh, and uh, currently the cost is around 5 billion US dollars per year to sustain uh, the Afghan National Army and uh, police. And uh, at uh, this summit, allies uh, committed to fund the Afghan forces 
2020 at or near the current levels of 5 billion. Uh, so uh, we have really a strong commitment from the United States and from non-US US allies and partners uh, to continue to co fund the Afghan army uh, uh, through 2020. Lady over there. Uh, thank you. Madame. Uh, thank you, with Reuters. Um, can Merci you clarify what troop levels the, the non-US um, NATO allies will be committed to um, for this next year? Is it going to be around the same, around 3,000, or it will be slightly less? And then um, the uh, you know, President Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah, uh, you, know, you, you met with them. Um, what are your concerns about the paralysis within the Afghan government and uh, the lack of unity and, um, and, and some of the problems they've been having politically? It's too uh, early to provide exact numbers uh, on the troop levels, but based on what has been decided, uh, oh no, sorry, based on what has been committed uh, in this meeting uh, today, uh, we can say that the uh, troop levels will be around uh, the same in 2015, sorry, in 2017 as it is in 2016, and that is around 12,000 troops. Uh, so uh, the exact numbers will be uh, something we decide later on. Uh, we will make decisions on that uh, uh, in the fall, uh, and, uh, and uh, there will be a substantial U.S. presence and a substantial non-U.S. presence in Afghanistan. Exact numbers will be available later, but uh, we will maintain approximately the same total force level uh, in 2017. Well, I, I, uh, I met with the uh, President of Ghana and Chief Executive Abdullah, and I also visited uh, uh, Kabul uh, recently, and uh, we continue uh, our uh, very strong partnership, and uh, they underline uh, very strongly their commitment to modernize, to implement reforms, and to fight uh, uh, corruption. This is not an easy task, and uh, Afghanistan still have many unsolved problems, uh, but they are moving in the right direction, and I think it's also important to remain that the reason why NATO is in Afghanistan is to prevent Afghanistan uh, from becoming a safe haven for international terrorists, and uh, we have achieved that. Uh, despite the fact that there, are, uh, there is still turmoil, and violence, and many, many uh, uh, remaining problems in Afghanistan. Thank you very much, uh, Vladimir Dobrowolski from Russia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Secretary General, could you please tell us what are the main results of uh, yesterday's evening's discussion on Russia? And I agree with the President Hollande that Russia is not a threat and not an adversary. We don't see any imminent threat against any NATO uh, ally. Uh, uh, Russia is neither the strategic partner. Uh, we tried uh, uh, to, or we are not in the strategic partnership with Russia, which we tried to develop after the end of the Cold War, but we are neither in the Cold War uh, situation. We are uh, in a new situation, which is different from anything we have experienced uh, uh, before. The dinner yesterday was an informal dinner uh, where uh, leaders uh, were able to discuss in a very frank and open uh, way. And uh, the main message from that dinner is that the alliance is united, that we stand together in our approach, based on uh, defense, strong defense, and constructive dialogue. And I am very pleased to see how strong that message uh, uh, is in NATO and how united we are behind that uh, message. So uh, this was an informal dinner, but... Uh, it was a united message from the dinner that the defense and dialogue is uh, what our relationship is based on. Thank you very much. This is uh, all we have time for now, but uh, we will see you objectifs. again after the next session. Merci beaucoup. Nous Thank you so much. Nous allons en rester là pour l'instant. Nous nous revoyons après la prochaine séance de travail.